Hi, dear fifth semester students. Welcome to this another class on value education. Sister Shida is here, and I'm glad to come to you for this class through this platform. Hope you all are good and safe, though busy attending classes online. The topic of today's class is about simple living. Simple living. You may be thinking, what this sister is talking about simple living in this present world when everyone is striving towards high standard living that easy, comfortable, rich or so-called luxurious life. Talking about simple living would not sound so relevant. Well, you may be right in thinking so because when we look around, we see almost all the people are very busy working hard to earn more money, to amass more wealth, to gather more goods, pursuing for a higher lifestyle which is comfortable and enjoyable. Yes, it looks like everyone is having competitions as to who can own the most beautiful house, possess more properties, have more vehicles, have more expensive gadgets, latest fashionable clothes and branded footwears, rich foods and drinks, etc. You know, even as individuals, we all want to have more things and more belongings, don't we? Every month we will love to get new things, especially new dresses and new footwears. And if any new items we notice in the advertisement, we will have no more peace until we get them, right? Without really thinking whether we sincerely need them or not. Or sometimes, just because we see others have, we desire that we should also have. In this way, we become good collectors. And the more we get, the more we want. And we are also fascinated with branded things and latest fashions because we feel that when we have them we will look good we will feel great and then we will be more happy but my dear students let us remember the fact that no high standard life can make us happier or no complicated or luxurious life can bring us happiness. Instead, a simple lifestyle or a life with minimum can assure us of true happiness. As Jesse Samper, when speaking about simple living, would put it, simplicity is the peak of civilization. And a simple life is a beautiful life. Another person, Paramahansa Yogananda, would also say, Be as simple as you can be. You will be astonished to see how uncomplicated and happy your life can become. Because the richest man is not he who has the most, but he who needs the least. Life is actually very simple, but it we it's we people who make it complicated. Kushan Wisdom says. And you know, there are many people who once have thought that luxurious life will make them happy and fantastic but later on have come to the realization that this easy and comfortable life doesn't make them so. Instead, simple life does and minimalism does. For instance, when we are poor, when we have less things, we find that we are more free and also more happy. Now let us see one video which is about a person who realizes that simplicity of life 
or by being a minimalist helps him to be more focused in life. I decided to live simply. When Jobs, who was kicked out of Apple, returned, the first thing he did was getting rid of old documents and equipment. He wanted to focus on products that could change the world, so he reduced everything else to a minimum. Mark Zuckerberg emphasizes the importance of simplicity, and such simplicity is shown not only in his work, but also in his fashion style. They knew that the simpler it was, the more they could focus on themselves. People who know what they really need, and those who cut things out for what is valuable to them, are called minimalists. Most people have too many things, however less than 20% of the products are actually used. The other 80% is waste that takes up space and people only use them a few times. If 80% of the unused items and clothes are eliminated, you can enjoy a pleasant environment and a happy life. Owning less and living more affluently are at the heart of minimal life. Here is a man who tried to have more and more. However, he decided to become a minimalist because he wanted to focus on what was valuable. I was a minimalist. 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 He wrote a book about all the processes and what he realized. All he did was disposing things, one by one. As he threw things away, I should at least have this. I should live in a house like this. He was relatively free from the sense of deprivation that came from comparing himself with others and reduced his anxiety about his job and future. Maybe we want to own one more to make ourselves look happy to others. But in this complicated world, what we need now is living simply. That's it. I hope the video has inspired us and leaving us with thought-provoking messages such as what we have here the caption of the great philosopher Plato. The greatest wealth is to live content with little. I feel that this saying of the great philosopher is very true because when we compare between the rich and the poor as who among them live a tension-free life, a response would be, no doubt it's the poor, not the rich. The poor or the simple live tension-free. And when we come to our own context, we also know it very well. For example, when we have to get ready to go somewhere, let's say for a fashion, many of us who happen to have more sets of dress or more pairs of shoes, we may require more time to get ready because we need time to decide what dress to wear. Whereas those who have with just a pair or a set or two pairs or two sets, they would find easier to choose and they would get ready faster. Here we have another video which will give us further explanation about life, that life is all about people and nature, not about things. And the moment we start accumulating more things, more complicated our life becomes, and the more stress we feel we are compelled to think about them. Thus, complicated life will not give us chance to enjoy happiness. It is then better to be minimalist for minimalism ensures us happiness and peaceful life. So let us watch it carefully. Real luxury is not working like a maniac to take an expensive vacation 
It is living a life you enjoy every day. The more things we accumulate, the more cluttered our lives become, and the more stressed we feel as we are compelled to think about them. Life is about people and nature, not about things. When I was in high school, I always followed the trends. I thought it was very cool. I constantly buying new clothes and gadgets. I remember one time, I watching a television, when there's an advertisement pop up, about new gadget. I mark the calendar and start saving money. I always compete to my friends. But after I bought my new gadget and feeling like a cool. A month ago, I was not happy. Because a new updated version is going to be released. I just lost my savings. Like buying trendy outfit. Every time I look at myself, in the front of mirror. Wearing my new expensive trendy clothes, I recognize that I am the same person. Same person, wearing the old clothes of mine, nothing changed, except my savings. I saved money weeks and weeks, just only to buy those things. In school, I seldom buy a food, and I go home early. I felt like there's something wrong. I was trapped by consumerism. I think this is the cause of having social media. I can't control my ego that time. I have no inner peace. During that time I am very thankful, because I haven't noticed, that my ex-girlfriend hacked my Facebook account. And I did not create a new one, anymore. A year after, I realized, I need to change my thoughts. I sat down and think. I asked myself why do I need to follow the trends? Why do I need to follow my ego? Why do I need to please and impress everyone? I felt like a sheep and always incomplete. First thing that I noticed, if I want to change my life, I need to change the way how I think. And to do that, I need to change my habit. I try to identify what causes me from keep buying things. I realized, I bought things, because of the environment that I live in. I surrounded myself of people who constantly buy things, a consumerist. I always engaged to the people who criticize others. And that's why I am being programmed in fear, if the people who surrounds me, will also gonna criticize me. This is what I learned. After realizing my mistakes, it's time to get back what I lost. I started to filter my friends. I chose the people who lift me up for a better, instead of who bringing me down. I surrounded myself of the people who also reflect I want to be, and how I want to feel. I engaged myself to the people who give positive thoughts, and encouraged my ideas, and bring out the best in me. Energies are contagious. It is less important to have lots of friends, and more important to have real ones. Know your circle. Make sure everybody in your boat is rowing and not drilling holes when you are not looking. By doing this, I just realized that my habit was also changing. I managed my time and financial correctly. I balance my body, mind and spirit. I stop worrying. I simplify my life and I felt like life is so easy. A month ago, I discovered the minimalism. Minimalism is a tool that can assist you in finding freedom. Freedom from fear, freedom for worry, freedom from depression, and freedom from the trappings of the consumer culture we've built our lives around. Minimalism is living a meaningful life with less stuff. By incorporating minimalism, I was been able to control my ego and desire from things that has really no meaning into my life. And plus points, I saved up a lot of money that I can use it to things that really matter. I sell some of my stuff. I only bought things that I only need. Then I've finally been able to find lasting happiness, and that's what we're all looking for. Isn't it? We all want to be happy. Minimalists search for happiness not through things, but through life itself. Thus, it's up to you to determine what is necessary, and what is superfluous in your life. In my own point of view, about my experience of being trapped, sometimes we need to think for ourselves, we need to live like no one else is around. Never depend your life on someone's opinion. Never believe to the people doesn't empower you. There's nothing wrong to buy things. But you have to ask yourself first. Do I really need this? Or I am just buying this to impress my friends and relatives. Many people spend money they haven't earned. To buy things they don't really need. To impress people they don't like. I hope this video helped you to stop being a consumerist. Don't collect material things. Because trends don't last. Instead create a meaningful life to create lasting memories. And I want you to know that being a minimalist is cooler than being a consumerist. Being simple as you can be, you will be astonished to see how uncomplicated and happy life can become. And by the way, always engage yourself in nature.
please hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe. I am very happy to see you in my next video. I'm sure you have not only liked the video, the real luxury living, but you have learned something from it. Really, the best things in life are not really things, because things don't last. And I would like to add something more here from the Bible about the rich man from St. Luke chapter 12 verse 20. The rich man who amassed many goods, especially grains and crops. This man was still planning to extend his storeroom, for the storeroom he had was too full already. He thought to himself, by having superfluous of footsteps, he can enjoy his life. But you know, to his surprise, he received a shocking information. That is, the voice of God came to him like this. You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. You see, it's a sorrowful ending. Now let us watch another video by Joshua Phil Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus. It is about a rich life with less stuff, the minimalist. This clip will clearly tell us more about minimalism and what does it mean to be a minimalist and also what it means to be part of a community. I kindly request you to listen attentively and learn something from this. My name is Ryan Nicodemus, and this is Joshua Fields Milburn. And the two of us run a website called TheMinimalists.com. And today we want to talk to you about what it means to be part of a community. But first, I want to share a story with you about how I became rich. Imagine your life a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. What's it going to look like? Imagine a life with less, less stuff, less clutter, less stress and debt and discontent. A life with fewer distractions. You're joking right now, right? Dude, we're trying to give a talk. Dude, sorry about that. <clears throat> Now, <clears throat> imagine a life with more. More time, more meaningful relationships, more growth and contribution. A life of passion unencumbered by the trappings of the chaotic world around you. Well, what you're imagining is an intentional life. It's not a perfect life. It's not even an easy life, but a simple one. What you're imagining is a rich life, the kind of rich that has nothing to do with wealth. You know, I used to think rich was earning $50,000 a year. Then when I started climbing the corporate ladder in my 20s, I quickly began earning 50 grand, but I didn't feel rich. So I tried to adjust for inflation. Maybe $75,000 a year was rich, maybe 90,000, maybe six figures, or Maybe owning a bunch of stuff. Maybe that was rich. Well, whatever rich was, I knew that once I got there, I would finally be happy. So as I made more money, I spent more money, all in the pursuit of the American dream, all in the pursuit of happiness. But the closer I got, the farther away happiness was. Five years ago, my entire life was different from what it is today. Radically different. I had 
everything I ever wanted. I had everything I was supposed to have. I had an impressive job title with a respectable corporation, a successful career managing hundreds of employees. I earned a six-figure income. I bought a fancy new car every couple years. I owned a huge three-bedroom condo. It even had two living rooms. I have no idea why a single guy needs two living rooms. I was living the American dream. Everyone around me said I was successful. But I was only ostensibly successful. You see, I also had a bunch of things that were hard to see from the outside. Even though I earned a lot of money, I had heaps of debt. But chasing the American dream, it cost me a lot more than money. My life was filled with stress and anxiety and discontent. I was miserable. I may have looked successful, but I certainly didn't feel successful. And it got to a point in my life where I didn't know what was important anymore. But one thing was clear. There was this gaping void in my life. So I tried to fill that void the same way many people do, with stuff. Lots of stuff. I was filling the void with consumer purchases. I bought new cars and electronics and closets full of expensive clothes. I bought furniture and expensive home decorations, and I always made sure to have all the latest gadgets. Oh, and when I didn't have enough cash in the bank, I paid for expensive meals, rounds of drinks, and frivolous vacations with credit cards. I was spending money faster than I earned it, attempting to buy my way to happiness, and I thought I'd get there one day eventually. I mean, happiness had to be somewhere just around the corner, right? But the stuff didn't fill the void. It widened it. And because I didn't know what was important, I continued to fill the void with stuff, going further into debt, working hard to buy things that weren't making me happy. This went on for years, a terrible cycle, lather, rinse, repeat. By my late 20s, my life on the outside looked great, but on the inside, I was a wreck. I was several years divorced, I was unhealthy, I was stuck. I drank a lot. I did drugs a lot. I used as many pacifiers as I could. And I continued to work 60, 70, sometimes 80 hours a week. And I forsook some of the most important aspects of my life. I barely ever thought about my health, my relationships, my passions. And worst of all, I felt stagnant. I certainly wasn't contributing to others, and I wasn't growing. My life lacked meaning, purpose, passion. If you would have asked me what I was passionate about, I would have looked at you like a deer in headlights. What am I passionate about? I had no idea. I was living paycheck to paycheck, living for a paycheck, living for stuff, living for a career that I didn't love but I wasn't really living at all. I was depressed. Then, as I was approaching my 30s, I noticed something different about my best friend of 20-something years. <laughs> Josh seemed happy for the first time in a really long time, like truly happy, ecstatic. But <clears throat> I didn't understand why. We had worked side by side at the same corporation throughout our 20s, both climbing the ranks, and he had been just as miserable as me. Something had to have changed. To boot, he had just gone through two of the most difficult events of his life. His mother had just passed away, and his marriage ended, both in the same month. He wasn't supposed to be happy. He certainly wasn't supposed to be happier than me. So I did what any good best friend would do. I took Josh out to lunch. I sat him down, and I asked him a question. Why the hell are you so happy? <laughs> he spent the next 20 minutes telling me about something called minimalism. He talked about how he spent the last few months simplifying his life, getting the clutter out of the way to make room for what was truly important. 
And then he introduced me to an entire community of people who had done the same thing. He introduced me to a guy named Colin Wright, a 24-year-old entrepreneur who travels to a new country every four months, carrying with him everything that he owns. Then there was Joshua Becker, a 36-year-old husband and father of two with a full-time job and a car and a house in suburban Vermont. And then he showed me Courtney Carver, a 40-year-old wife and mother to a teenage daughter in Salt Lake City. And there was Leo Babauta, a 38-year-old husband and father of six in San Francisco. Although all these people were living considerably different lives, people from different backgrounds with children and families in different work situations, they all shared at least two things in common. First, they were living deliberate, meaningful lives. They were passionate and purpose-driven. They seemed much richer than any of the so-called rich guys I worked with in the corporate world. And second, they attributed their meaningful lives to this thing called minimalism. So me being the problem-solving guy that I am, I decided to become a minimalist right there on the spot. I looked up at Josh. I excitedly declared, all right, man, I'm going to do it. I'm in. I'm going to be a minimalist. Now what? You see, I didn't want to spend months paring down my items like he had. That was great for him, but I wanted faster results. So we came up with this idea of a packing party. We decided to pack all my belongings as if I were moving. And then I would unpack only the items I needed over the next three weeks. Josh literally helped me box up everything. My clothes, my kitchenware, my towels, my TVs, my electronics, my frame photographs and paintings, my toiletries, even my furniture. Everything. After nine hours and a couple pizza deliveries, everything was packed. So there Josh and I were, sitting in my second living room, feeling exhausted, staring at boxes stacked halfway to my 12-foot ceiling. My condo was empty, and everything smelled like cardboard. Everything I owned, every single thing I had worked hard for over the last decade was sitting there in that room. Just boxes stacked on top of boxes stacked on top of boxes. Now, each box was labeled so I know where to go when I needed a particular item. Labels like living room, junk drawer number one, kitchenware, bedroom closet, junk drawer number nine, so forth and so on. I spent the next 21 days unpacking only the items I needed. My toothbrush, my bed and bed sheets, the furniture I actually used, some kitchenware, a tool set, just the things that added value to my life. After three weeks, 80% of my stuff was still sitting in those boxes, just sitting there, unaccessed. All those things that were supposed to make me happy, they weren't doing their job. So I decided to donate and sell all of it. And you know what? I started to feel rich for the first time. I started to feel rich once I got everything out of the way and made room for everything that remains. A month later, my entire perspective had changed. And then I thought to myself, maybe some people might find value in my story, in our story. So Ryan and I did, I guess, what anyone would do. We started a blog. <laughs> we called it The Minimalists. And that was three years ago. And then something amazing happened. 52 people visited our website in the first month. 52! I realize that might sound unremarkable at first, but that meant that our story was resonating with dozens of people. And then other amazing things started happening. 52 readers turned into 500. 500 became 5,000. And now, more than 2 million people a year read our words. 
And it turns out that when you add value to people's lives, they're pretty eager to share the message with their friends and their family, to add value to their lives. Adding value, it's a basic human instinct. In fact, that's why we're here today. A couple of years ago, Ryan and I moved from Ohio to Montana. And what we discovered here was an entire community of people, people who weren't traditionally wealthy, but who were rich in a different way. We discovered so many people who were willing to contribute beyond themselves. And that's what makes a real community, contribution. And so we'd like to encourage everyone to take a look at your day-to-day -day lives. Take a look at whatever eats up the majority of your time. Is it checking email or Facebook? or watching TV? Is it shopping online or at retail stores? Is it working hard for a paycheck to buy stuff you don't need, things that won't make you happy? Now, it's not that we think that there's anything inherently wrong with material possessions or working a nine to five. There's not. We all need some stuff. We all have to pay the bills, right? It's just that when we put those things first, we tend to lose sight of our real priorities. We lose sight of life's purpose. And so maybe getting some of the excess stuff out of the way, clearing the clutter from our lives, can help us all focus on, well, everything that remains. Things like health, relationships, growth, contribution, community. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, a rich life with less stuff, the minimalist. I believe you have watched it. That's good. And the video is self-explanatory enough and I don't think it still needed to talk more on it. So let me just wind it in this way. We all need money, wealth and things in life. And we cannot without these as long as we are alive. But we all should make a differences between needs and wants. Knowing well that we can never satisfy our wants but we can satisfy our needs. To make our lives simple or complicated is also in our hands. So let us try our best to live a simple lifestyle by trying to reduce our wants and have only what we genuinely need. By doing so, we will be free and enjoy the happiness of life and be able to radiate the same to others. Thank you so much. God bless your everyday effort to do the best. Stay safe and hope to see you soon. Once again, thank you and God bless.